Good Monday morning. Welcome to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV, Big Fox. I'm your host, Frank Aikum, and we have an exciting show. If this is your first time tuning in, I understand kids and teachers are off this week. So if this is your first time catching us, we appreciate it. And I hope that you'll stay with us and you'll uh, continue to be a fan of Frankly Speaking and make this a part of your daily routine. So on the program this morning, let's take a look and do some housekeeping before we begin here. This is our lineup for the week. Today we're going to be talking with Sarah Latin. She is the Chemung County Republican chairperson. She's going to tell us how we can get involved, what the races look like in uh, the Shemung area, and we'll talk to you about all of the news of the day, and that's coming up in just a little bit. On tomorrow's program, Bobby Joe Burdick from Armed Women of America, and then on Wednesday, Stuman County Clerk Judy Hunter, and then you see the big, well, they're all big guests, don't get me wrong, but Thursday and Friday is the one uh, I've been highlighting and promoting for uh, quite some time. It is a two-day interview. That's how much time we spend together with Dwayne Eddy, rock and roll, Hall of Famer, musicians, Hall of Famer, and Stuman County Hall of Fame. <laughs> member. So Dwayne Eddy is going to join us on Thursday and Friday. Really looking forward to that. Um, if you're not familiar with his uh, career, I would highly re recommend that you look him up. I would also um, suggest that you tune in for the interview and, and maybe brainstorm, get a hold of me and figure out ways that we can honor uh, his legacy. Yeah. Dwayne was born in Corning, New York, and he never shied away from that. He was very vocal about that and all of his uh, publicity, all of his um, biographies that he had on album jackets and like that. So uh, it's going to be a neat interview, and I hope that we can do something here in the city of Corning to honor his uh, just amazing, legendary uh, career. Also, as always, if you want to contact me with questions, comments, concerns, there is our contact information. I've been receiving a lot. Well, hopefully, we'll get to some a little bit later on. Uh, but I've been receiving a lot of great emails and a lot of great texts, and I appreciate all the kind words and the great questions that we've been able to, to ask our guests um, these last few weeks. It's hard to believe that we're going into our fourth week. This is the beginning of our fourth week on Frankly Speaking, and it just it's going by quick, and we're having a blast doing it. I hope you're having as much fun when you watch it. So we've got a lot of national stories to get to, as you are probably aware, if you are following it all uh, at the state level. We missed that budget deadline, which was Saturday. Um, so we're going to take a look at that, what that means, what is uh, happening in Albany going forward because of that delay. Uh, so we'll be discussing that a little bit later on as well, if we have the time. But again, right there is our contact information. If you have any questions, uh, if you have a question for Sarah Latin, maybe you want to get involved uh, in the Republican Party or just in politics in general, she's the person to ask. Uh, we had Steuben County uh, GOP Chairman Joe Sempolinski on a few weeks ago, and now we have Shemung. County Republican chairperson, uh, that's Sarah Latin. So let's take our first break, and then when we come back, uh, we'll well we'll get right into the news. How's that sound? So stay with us. This is Frankly Speaking on WYDC TV, Big Fox. I'm your host Frank Aikum, and we are broadcasting live on Market Street from the Hesselson Studio. So please stay with us. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV. Big Fox broadcasting from the Hesselson studio on beautiful Marcus Street in Corning. One uh, email I wanted to get to, and it's so kind. Again, please reach out to us at any time. I received this over the weekend, or on Friday, excuse me. No school today or all next week. Best part of it, besides getting to sleep in a little, is that I get to watch your program. How nice is that? Keep up the good work. Thank you, Dawn. Isn't that nice? Uh, you can contact me again uh, if you're new to the program. There's our information. It doesn't always have to be glowing reviews. <laughs> we'll take any email or text uh, that you want to send in. Okay, let's get to what is uh, arguably the biggest story. <laughs> and what is going to be, if the mugshot is released, will be uh, the most shared the most viral photo, perhaps, of all time. Uh, but President Trump has confirmed he will appear in court on New York City, in New York City, excuse me, on Tuesday following his indictment. He said, I will be leaving Mar-a-Lago on Monday at noon, heading to Trump Tower in New York. On Tuesday morning, I will be going to, believe it or not, the courthouse. America was not supposed to be this way, is what he posted on Truth Social. The corrupt DA has no case. What he does have is a venue where it is impossible, impossible in all caps, for me to get a fair trial. It must be changed. And a Trump-hating judge, hand-selected by the Soros-backed DA, he must be changed, also has the DOJ working in the DA's office, unprecedented. I, there's something I got thinking about. So he's going to have to have Secret Service with him um, at all times. 
So what happens if this judge does throw former President Trump in jail? Well, the Secret Service, they would have to be there with him. Uh, I don't know if that means in an actual cell. I don't know if that means outside. It, it, this is so unprecedented that it raises so many concerns. It sends a, a very troubling message uh, to our foreign adversaries uh, showing this kind of weakness or this, uh, some people have called it um, uh, kind of kangaroo court or uh, banana republic type scenarios. Uh, it, is, it is going to be fascinating to see how, uh, as uh, Trump puts it, the, this political persecution how uh, he's going to handle it, how the media is going to cover it. Now, uh, uh, Saki, um, Jen, I just drew a blank. She told Democrats not to celebrate or brag about this indictment. I would argue that that's too little too late. Um, if you've watched the news, if you've watched the, the late night shows, uh, if you watch Saturday Night Live, etc., uh, there is a giddiness to these people about what is happening. And I, again, I, I guess it's, Never mind what this means for our future as a country. Never mind what this uh, does for our image on the world uh, stage. It's all about this hatred of Trump. Um, and they, they have been. I understand Saki's point here. Um, kind of the old uh, statement, act like you've been there before. She says, now is not the time for Democrat candidates to celebrate, to brag, to predict the outcome of legal cases. If you can, I'd actually just put your head down and stay out of it for now. Uh, I don't think too many people will uh, heed <laughs> her warning or heed her message there. Uh, as you've seen already, the, the braggadocious, but the, the, just the giddiness is the only word I can think about. They're so excited this is happening without worrying whatsoever about the repercussions. Now, again, coming from the New York Post, we're learning more about Alvin Bragg. Um, and as time goes on, we see this... Uh, well, again, wanting to just blindly go after Trump and Jennifer Harrison at the Post asked, what about New York's victims? And I thought this was a very good point. We've talked about uh, the crime, not just in the city, but in all of New York because of bail reform. And we'll hopefully get to that a little bit later on with the budget. But um, Harrison saying he is incompetent, meaning Bragg. And we knew this would happen. And that, uh, and that was way before he woke up one day and decided a former U.S. president is one of the few people he would actually prosecute. Yes, and that's the big issue, the crime going unprosecuted uh, in New York City. Things have not gotten better, only progressively worse, she writes, pun intended. In his first year, Bragg downgraded 52% of felonies to misdemeanors compared with 39% downgrade back in 2019 and had a dismal 51% conviction rate for felonies he did charge. No one is safer as he promised as a result of his uh, time in the district attorney's office. Bragg released a woman who participated in the brutal killing of a U.S. veteran on time served after only 14 months. In Alvin Bragg's New York, you can literally get away with murder. Start doing your job and prosecuting all criminals without the politics and ideology. New Yorkers deserve better. They deserve to feel safe. And that's not just brag. Obviously, it's brag. But we do deserve to feel safe. Unfortunately, with the laws on the books, uh, with bail reform and the like, we don't feel safe. We've talked about this time and time again, sadly, for the last three weeks, uh, nearly every day, about the rise in crime, the, ro the rise of ODs, drugs, addiction. Um, and bail reform has been such a major factor in all that. And yet, uh, even minor changes proposed by Hochul have been uh, shunned by uh, Democrats in Albany. So we've got more to talk about. I do have to take another short break. So stay with us. We'll be right back with Frankly Speaking here on WYDC-TV, Big Fox. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on wydc TV Big Fox broadcasting from the Hasselson studio. As I mentioned, Sarah Latin will be our guest in just a little bit. She's the chairperson of the Chemung County Republican Party, so you'll want to stay tuned for that. It's not too late to get those last-minute questions in. If you have any questions how you can get involved uh, with the political process, as you've heard me say time and time again, this is um, petition season, and that is a, a fun Difficult time for candidates, for the committees, and they've been out really working hard. And, and kudos to anybody that did that and took out petitions, whether it's for themselves or for a candidate that they believe in. And if you are a candidate, please contact me. We'd love to have you on the program uh, before election season. So 
the budget uh, is late in New York. It was supposed to, well, the deadline was the first. Of course, uh, the first came and went. Um, they're still being worked out. A lot of, uh, I guess, a lot of the, the problem is the negotiations with bail reform. Um, not much of a, uh, a progress there. A lot of people have, their, have, dri- uh, have uh, put the line in the sand and do not want to see change to bail reform. If a budget isn't approved by 4 p.m. today, okay, it would be, it could impact New York's ability to pay more than 57,000 state workers. Wow, 57,000 state workers. Unless lawmakers agree on a supplemental budget to bridge the gap, they're talking about that. If there is kind of this temporary budget, uh, they do not believe that uh, bail reform would be a part of that at all. That would just kind of be a stopgap to keep things in check. Um, so we've got a few things specifically on that, but just to show you how radical things are getting in Albany, I think I mentioned this group uh, last week or the week before. They're called Raise Up. And the headline, they sent me a, a press release. I'm not sure how I got on their press releases, but I'm glad uh, I did. They say to Governor Hochul, we don't want your pennies. And I thought, what does that mean? What is the pennies that they're talking about? Well, that means $15 minimum wage. They believe that is just pennies, that that's uh, laughable, insulting that that is what Governor Hochul is proposing. $15 isn't enough. They're actually demanding $21.25 minimum wage. That's per hour, minimum wage. Uh, The Raise the Wage Act would help, quote, 2.9 million New Yorkers by putting an average annual increase of $3,300 in their pocket or $63 in a week. In comparison, according to Raise Up New York, Governor Hochul's less effective proposal would increase pay for 900,000 workers with only $13 a week, barely enough to buy lunch. Oof. So just pennies, $15 an hour is just ultimately pennies to this group. I don't know where it ends. I don't know, uh, will, once they get the 21, what did I say, 21.25, $21.25, once they get that, then what? They're not going to stop there, of course. They're gonna keep pushing and, it, where does it end? We don't have the money in this state. And in this case, we can't, we can't keep driving businesses out. And that's what every decision that seems like that comes from Albany is another way to either hurt the residents that are still here or to uh, hurt the business climate. Oh, oh, I got to unlock the door here. Our guest is walking in. Yeah, come on in. We're live. Ooh, we're live on the air. I'm going to take a short break and then we'll jump right in with our guests. So stay with us. This is Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV Big Fox. Stay with us. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV Big Fox, broadcasting live from the Hesselson studio. And this is the M.A. Neal Financial Services section of our program. Our guest this morning, the chair of the Chemung County. Uh, Republican Party, excuse me, I wrote down my notes wrong. Uh, Sarah Land's our guest. Good morning. Good morning. So we got a lot of questions. This is your favorite time of year, petition season? Oh, by far. How, how <laughs> did it go this year? Because, I mean, we're pretty much winding down. It is winding down. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the legislature and the governor signed uh, recently an extension for the deadline to file them. But uh, committee people have been working on the petition, circulating them since February 28th, and it was right up until... Last week was really, you know, yeah. the hard press to make sure that candidates all had their numbers. It was a tough year, um, not just for Chemung County, but all around mm-hmm. the state, um, because we're talking about a time that's cold, cold. Mm-hmm. shorter days before the hour change. And that that really is a barrier for people it to, is. you know, get those signatures. And it's been so rainy. And I don't yeah. know if it's because of... Uh, COVID or what people just do not answer their doors anymore they do not answer their doors and you know quite I have to be honest with you it, you know there's there's parts of I don't open my door I know. after you know, certain dark. hours yeah yeah and it gets no, dark so early absolutely. at the beginning of- I mean it's the world we live in so mm-hmm. I respect that but it's it's hard to get them and and yeah. I think just to to hit on the point of how important it is people know why that person's mm-hmm. come to your door mm-hmm. you know and that's what we try to get the message out here because I think there's so many times we see on the news uh watch out for this scam or things like that. Yeah. So when an older person opens her door and you say, hey, would you sign this? Right. It raises some red flags and kind of rightfully so, but it is for the right reason. Right. And I think also people think, well, that means I have to vote for that person. Right. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't. Mm-hmm. It just means it gets them on the line so that you have candidates to vote for. Mm-hmm. I I went out last week and I walked four miles according to my Fitbit and I got four signatures. Yeah. Isn't it nuts? There, it is. That, does it look as if uh, everybody got the signatures that they needed? 
we have a great committee yeah awesome committee and they exceed the numbers that each candidate mm -hmm. won we always want that cushion because mm -hmm. you never know mm -hmm. you know if us, your petition is going to get challenged so yep all of our candidates okay. are in good shape good. We're, we're really happy about that now you have some exciting candidates this year people like me a political nerd the local stuff's exciting so do you have some exciting races coming up well we we have countywide our sheriff right. bill schramm yep. he awesome he's day. running for re-election yep. um amazing sheriff uh da whedon wetmore yeah. is running for re-election so that's awesome we had a change in shimon county um uh, Jen Furman was oh. our county treasurer. Mm -hmm. um, she resigned yeah. and she went to work for our county executive as oh. his deputy. Oh, good for her. So we have a new candidate, uh, Caitlin, and I'm probably not going to say the name right, but Calabani Ruiz oh, okay. is running. She worked underneath Jen. She's a oh, great, great candidate. She, boy, she's been knocking on doors and <laughs> did an awesome job. And all of our city council, Elmira City Council, are up for um, election. That's six seats okay. in the city of Elmira. And then we have a lot of justice and, and town board seats. Up. How does the Republican Party itself look in these races? What's that? How does the Republican Party itself look in the, with these races? I mean, do we have strong candidates? We're strong. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're pretty excited. Yeah. The city, the city, uh, definitely. We we have some new people That's that have great. never run for office uh. before. We're excited about that and um, looking forward to see how they do. And you know what? They've hit the ground running. Good. I've been really impressed with um, a few of our candidates there. Well, I think it's such a daunting task when you first decide that you're going to run, but it gets kind of fun, doesn't it? I mean, I, the petition process is difficult, but getting to talk to people and finding out what is their concern, yep. I love that. It's motivating. It really is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Those conversations. And how do you get young, younger people or new blood? Because a lot of times in some of these towns and cities, they can't get anybody to run, well, let alone fresh people. Exactly. Yep. And and that's one thing that we really, our committee is trying to focus on, mm -hmm. is make sure that we're mentoring that next generation to get right. involved. I can say on our county committee, we have a couple new people oh. that we're excited about. One is a parliamentarian, oh. Colton Hillman. Okay. Yeah, uh, great. Came back after going to law school and oh, lives wow. in the area. And, you know, he's been great. And and then Cody Combs, our new secretary. Okay. They're both in that, that next generation that's that you great. want to get involved mm -hmm. in. We're trying also to tell people, listen, as a candidate, make sure you're mentoring someone. Make mm -hmm. sure that if you know someone is interested, show them, you know, what this is the path that you want to take to get involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, show them the ropes. And that's why I think what you do and Joe Sempolinski do, focusing on young people getting involved. Because if we don't have that, the right. party's only going to suffer in the that's long right. run. That's right. And it seems like sometimes in other areas that uh, it's always the same people that do it over and over in the volunteers. So it's nice that you have new volunteers. We do. And I'm excited to mm -hmm. see them bring in more people who you know it's a different face right yeah. it's mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. that's that's what i think the next generation our kids and grandkids mm -hmm. need to see that you know what it I don't want to get involved in politics. Well, you know what? This is our future, mm -hmm. right? And if you want a voice in the future, it's not just your vote. It's about being involved. Well, that's one thing I always try to say. And people, you know, you pay attention to the big races, presidential, right. Senate, governor, but it's really the local races that affect your day-to-day -day life. Absolutely. I, it's your local town council, town mm -hmm. board, planning board, school board. Yes. I, I've sat on the Elmira City School Board <laughs> since 2009. Yeah. It's one of the most important things I feel like I do. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Now, why did you get involved in the first place? Why did you decide to become the chairperson of the Republican Party? In well, it's kind of interesting. I didn't set out to become the chair. I'll be <laughs> honest with you. I'm, I feel like I'm more behind the scenes kind of sure. person. Um, but what happened was in 2020, Rodney Strange, uh, the chair, yeah. um, needed to focus more on his legislate, running his legislators yeah. and um, running for reelection. So he appointed me. Okay. So then um, I was elected. <laughs> <laughs> there I am. And um, the committee graciously elected me in oh, 2021. So I've been serving as chair. How, how often do you have to rerun? I think it's every two years. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, that's good for you because it's probably a lot of work, isn't it? Yes, it is. This time it, specifically. It's, it's a lot of work all year long because yeah. if we're not collecting petitions we're still supporting candidates sure. um and that that is the most important thing we're doing yeah so it's supporting them and it's also holding events so that people in the community can come and meet the candidates and we have a summer event every year yeah. This one's July 20th up at Hilltop. It's oh. our barbecue. Excited about that. Yeah, and you do have great events. I know that you combined with Stu Ben uh, recently, and that was really nice. Oh, that was, yeah, a that lot was a of big fun. Turnout. We work so well together mm -hmm. with the, the mm -hmm. surrounding county chairs well, and Skyla County. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Tioga County, yeah, great bunch of people. Uh, so if someone's thinking to themselves, I want to get involved, but I'm a little scared or intimidated uh, to maybe join the committee, what would you say to them? 
And we do. I mean, I, I get calls weekly from mm-hmm. people saying, you know, just how do I get involved? And yet circulating petitions can be very overwhelming. Mm-hmm. So we say, you know what, we want you to be comfortable w- with how you're getting involved. So it's really connecting them with someone, a current candidate sure. even, mm-hmm. in their community. That's the first step is that if you, if they lived in, say, Horseheads, is I'd reach out to a committee person in Horseheads and say, hey, listen, can you talk with, with so-and-so? Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it works out well. And if you do take out petitions, I joked with Joe, but it, you will be that politician's best friend for life. Oh my gosh, they're so appreciative. Uh, well, we are so appreciative. Mm-hmm. Because you have such big numbers sometimes, and you can't just do it by yourself. So to think mm-hmm. people go out on their free time when they're not the candidate to go out and get those signatures, I got to give them a big pat on the back. Yeah, for county wide, it's a thousand signatures. Wow. You know, and it it's it takes a lot of time and, and commitment. Mm-hmm. So yes, there's a there's a lot of appreciation for that. Yeah, uh, Sheriff Schramm was saying he was out getting petitions, and a thousand. I mean, people don't realize. Like I said, it took me that long to get four signatures. So yeah. by a thousand, that's a lot. So we got to take a short break. Will you stay with us? I will. All right, we'll be right back with Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV, Big Fox. Stay with us. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC TV Big Fox. This is the M.A. Neal Financial Services section of our program. So we were talking with Sarah Latin about uh, the fun of running for office. What would you say to someone that is thinking, maybe I should get involved? Where do they start first? Contact you? Yes. Mm -hmm. They can contact me on my cell, 607-738-2881. Or they can email me at the shemungcountygop.com or at gmail.com. Okay. Uh, so let's talk just a minute, uh, do a side note here on, on politics. We've got the budget was overdue in Albany. This is why I think it's important people get involved. We kind of get sick of what we're seeing in Albany. We get sick mm-hmm. of what we're seeing in Washington. The biggest change you can make, in my opinion, is running for some type of office or helping someone you believe in run That's for right. office. I agree. It's it's your way to have a tangible difference, mm-hmm. right? There's mm-hmm. one thing that you feel defeated and you know what, I vote, but I don't feel like anything's changing. You know what, you can get, get involved. Mm-hmm. You can participate, you can support candidates. Yeah. You know, it's as simple as attending an event mm-hmm. for for your local GOP, and you know that way you're supporting and you get you gives you an opportunity to meet the candidates. Yes. And I don't think people realize that it's not just for committee people. Mm-hmm. No, it's anybody. Anyone that mm-hmm. wants to attend. Mm-hmm. And uh, can people sign up for the committee as well, or just attend? Well, the committee we have districts, oh, so it's important okay. that they contact me and I connect them with the local the town right chair. district. Okay, yep. so that's the best way to get involved. And like I said, it maybe or you said it actually, maybe it isn't petitions, but it's just helping in any way that they can. Mm-hmm. And everybody has a unique set of talents that we can Absolutely. use. Absolutely, I'd yeah. love to have help just planning events. Mm-hmm. You know, how do you think we as Republicans? Reach out to the the voters of New York because it always seems like no matter what we do, there, well now there's a super majority of Democrats. How do we how do we combat that? Just keep chugging away. Keep chugging away, but you know, again, don't give up. Yeah. Motivate people to get mm-hmm. out and vote. Mm-hmm. It, you, you know, if we had every Republican upstate, I know. if every gun owner alone mm-hmm. got out and voted. You know what? We different. could take the power back. We could. And it's amazing because you see so much excitement around here for the local races, for uh, the candidates. And it's just the city just kills us every yes. time. And yes. And then you see the budget process and we can't get something. And I, I feel like I'm talking about this with every guest that we have. But we can't get something as simple as a tweak, a minor tweak to ballot reform. Well, I know. And, and the frustration. Well, listen, giving up is not an option. No. Mm-mm. Because this is not just our our life but it's the future of our kids and grandkids Mm -hmm. and uh, so giving up is not an option so you know what it's motivating other people to make sure to get out there and vote and and not feeling defeated because we have lost I see I saw a lot of people get defeated because we didn't have the red wave we thought we were going Mm -hmm. to Mm -hmm. well you know now's not the time to give up on it it's not the time to give up and if you do feel let down because you said I voted for Zeldin or I voted for whoever and they lost well that's one vote get involved with the committee maybe run for something yourself or whatever the case may be but you can make more of a change once you're involved absolutely and you know I say to some people listen Republican is a party that is is not identified by one person Mm -hmm. it's not identified by one principle right you know what people are all over the place but we all share in that fundamental belief you know that business should be running our country Mm -hmm. and and you know motivating people to be involved and be a voice of our country Mm -hmm. and I I think the more we get involved the more you realize okay this stinks what happens in this part of Washington or Albany or whatever but you can feel at least at night that you did your part that's right and don't blame a party right you know 
what? Like, yeah. Don't blame a party. Yeah. And that's another thing we were talking about there, but I was talking to somebody else too. In the petition process, we're so divided right we now. Are. If you if you knock on the wrong door, yes. you can get an earful. Anger. Oh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anger. I'm not saying we don't have a reason to be frustrated sure. and but you know what? No good decision comes out of fear or anger, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So that's we've got to point. turn those those feelings and that frustration into tangible again mm-hmm. action mm-hmm. and get involved. So we mentioned if you want to get involved in the committee, but what would you say to someone that's thinking about just getting involved in politics in general, maybe running for office? Well, what I would tell them is reach out to candidates or not candidates, but reach out to the sitting town board member. Mm-hmm. If you're interested in getting on the town council, reach out to that person or reach out to us and we'll connect you with that mm-hmm. person so they can tell you, hey, listen, this is how it works. This is what you can expect so that also you can be supported right. by other Republicans. You know, for me, the first time I ran for school board was pretty intimidating, oh, I have yeah. to tell you. Oh, yeah. Um, but, they get, they you know, can get pretty <laughs> intense. Yeah. yeah. But I had a great I had a great mentor, George Winter. Oh, I worked for him and yeah. he um, definitely was supportive of me doing that because you know what? You don't get paid for school board. Right. right. And it's a volunteer position but it's so rewarding oh, i'm sure i'm sure and i think people will find it rewarding once they do it but there is that intimidation factor where you think how do i even get started that's right but that's it's right. super simple yep just reach out to us mm-hmm. you know what we can talk about here's the steps you need to take mm-hmm. so petitions are being handed in this week so what's next now we focus on on november or the primaries if there are primaries oh well, there's primaries yeah yes yeah, we, you have, we have a handful of primaries okay. so right. those those candidates need to knock on doors which they're doing mm-hmm. you know what they got to keep pounding the pavement and right. let people know who they are um, and then once we're past the June 23rd primary, then it's candidates keep knocking for the November election. Yeah. So just when 7. you're done knocking for petitions, you're right, right yeah. back at it. Listen, what wins what wins these campaigns, what wins elections mm-hmm. is talking with the people, 100%. letting them know who you are, knocking mm-hmm. on those doors. Mm-hmm. That's why I know I put down the petition process a little bit because it's so difficult. But I, I can't think of anything more rewarding at the end of the day because you talk to these people and you get to know, I had no idea about this issue, why that concerns you. Or you think it's going great, whatever the case may be but you have that one-on-one with the, that's with the, right with your neighbor that's right essentially and i say to i say to anyone that's answering their door mm-hmm. you know what we need to show appreciation for these people that are willing to run too yeah yeah, yeah. honestly and you sh- you know for me um you know what great candidates are so important yes that republican candidates are so important mm-hmm. And, and um, you know, I look forward to a successful 2023 yeah. November election. Yeah, and then, then the then the big ones come up again. Man, yeah, it's, absolutely. It never ends. But I, like I said, it, it's it's an exciting time of year if you are a political person with petitions in. You get to see who's going to run. And then primary or general election. It's going to be fun if people just pay attention, do the research. And that's why we try to have guests on this program. Right. Because don't I, I think we've all been guilty of this. Well, I went to school with his kids, so I'll vote for him. Well, no, do the research and actually right. look at who's running because those people cha- can change your day-to-day life and you Absolutely. don't even know it. That's right. You know? Absolutely. They're making decisions that affect you, mm-hmm. your family, and mm-hmm. your future. And your neighborhood. And yeah. yes, and, and they're the closest to you. Like yeah. you said, the, yeah. you know, those local lo, those local seats, for sure. And they could be your neighbor right down the street. You don't even realize. So right. I know you mentioned before, before we go, what's the best way to contact you if they want to get involved? Um, they can call me, 607-738-2881, or email me, shamungcountygop at gmail.com. Well, Sarah Lyons, better guest. Thanks so much for oh, being on the show. I hope, you'll, I hope you'll come on again soon. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Thank uh, you for what you do. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll be right back with Frankly Speaking here on WIDC TV, Big Fox. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WIDC TV, Big Fox. I'm your host, Frank Acom. Thanks again to Sarah Land for being our guest. That was the M.A. Neal Financial Services section of our program. It is uh, very important as we see the, the debacle in the budget in Albany. It is very important to get involved. And again, I go to that point. Make sure you know who you're voting for. Um, you know, it's very easy. We're all busy to kind of think, well, I'll go in and I'll vote uh, for council or whoever. Um, but do you know who you're voting for? Do the research, and that's why we call this the Town Hall of the Airwaves, and this is what uh, I try to accomplish on radio as well. I want you to know about the candidates before you go in the voting booth, whatever level that is. Uh, So we'll have as many guests as we can, and that's why, again, 
I, I mentioned it earlier, but if you are a candidate or if you are running for office or you know somebody that would like to be on the program, that's the best way to reach me. You can call that number and leave a voicemail or you can text me or email me. We would love to have you on the show. It doesn't have to be a 20-minute interview. It can be just a quick, here, here's who I am, five-minute interview. It's, it's all about getting that information out to the voters and the residents of our community so we can become a better place in our community. Okay, we have a couple news stories we're going to get to in just a little bit. Let me just check my time here. Yeah, we're doing good. A uh, few more things here about the budget. Let me take that down. And we were talking about the fact that the budget, uh, the deadline was missed. That was would have been Saturday, of course. Breeze past that. Uh, they have to come up with something by 4 p.m. Uh, today or essentially can't pay their workers. But I thought this was interesting, and I'm sure you've heard a lot about it, rumblings on the street. Uh, but they want us to go electric. They don't want you to have gas appliances in your home. And this looks like it could be a part of the budget. Uh, as early as 2025, new homes in New York may start going up without any kind of gas or oil heat, relying instead on new forms of electric-driven heating systems. Eliminating gas stoves in new homes, though, may come later. But those who already have gas, hook <clears throat> excuse me, gas hookups will likely be able to keep using their stoves for a while. This is going to be very interesting. Um, the mandate for electri electrically heated homes may be the first change that New Yorkers will see as the state's 2019 landmark Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act starts to take effect. Now, here's another example of just more cost to you and I, the residents of New York. I know we talked with Assemblyman Phil Palmisano about this recently. Just the the, the added cost, think about that, you, you, you go to change your furnace or whatever, and now you have to basically completely uh, alter how your home was set up. Uh, but it's clear that some kind of ban on natural gas heating will likely be codified this year, probably in the state budget. And this, uh, this piece was, I think it was city and state politics, but I can't remember. Um, just one boneheaded, wrongheaded decision. Listen, if you want to have a, a electric he that's fine but when you start doing this mandate and the cost on people when do you decide and to sarah land's point we can't give up on the state but when did you decide it's getting too expensive just to live our taxes are constantly increased we see crime on the streets because of uh the lack of uh, altering the bail reform you see just costs on our back like this uh, to get our house retrofitted i guess maybe would be the word uh, for electric heat it's I guess they either don't care or they think uh, we, they're going to call our bluff and more people will sadly move out. Um, Hochul is unlikely to push the bail change in that stopgap budget bill that I mentioned earlier. Uh, that will probably happen today. Just kind of a, uh, a holdover until they can get their final budget approved. Uh, that's at least according to one Democrat. Um, they're also calling for uh, some Democrats for judicial discretion with the bail law. Uh, top Democrat leaders have not embraced the proposal from the governor. That's the, the change to bail reform. But in recent days, both Assembly Speaker Hasty and uh, Senate Majority Leader uh, Stuart Cousins have not ruled out a compromise that would clarify the law without undermining the initial intent of creating a more equitable criminal justice system. That key word, equitable. Uh, the problem is we know, and we've talked about it at Nazim with the sheriffs, both Stu Bend County and Shimon County. We've talked about it with all the politicians we have in. This bail reform just ties the hands of the police and encourages these criminals and what they do. So we have to take another short break, but we are going to wrap up a little bit on the budget. Just a few other quick things. As I mentioned at the top of the program, uh, President Trump has signaled that he will be turning himself in uh, tomorrow. It'll be interesting that that mugshot will be probably the biggest uh, photo of all time. Um, now, will the left listen to Saki, who said, Jen Saki saying, hey, uh, don't gloat over this. Don't brag over this. So far, according to the media, according to a lot in the news, and according to the late night shows, uh, they're loving every minute of it. Never mind what it does on the back end to uh, what it makes our country look like, what it makes uh, our system look like to our foreign adversaries. That, I think, is uh, on the back burner as compared to the 
the tremendous drive they have to get Trump one way or another. So we're going to take that short break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We're frankly speaking here on WYDC TV, Big Fox broadcasting live from the Hesselson studio. I'm Marcus Street and Corning. Stay with us. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC-TV, Big Fox Broadcasting from the Hesselson's studio. I wanted to mention before we wrap up, I know it's been a lot of doom and gloom about the budget, about Albany in general. I thought this was kind of nice. Governor Hochul issued a proclamation declaring April this month military child uh, to recognize children who are separated from a parent on active duty. So it's month of the military child. And the reason I mention this is if you are... Uh, in a family where uh, one of the parents is separated due to active duty, uh, you can sign up. There is a website. Let me scroll down just a little bit if it'll let me. There is the uh, website because there's some free events coming up Saturday, April 22nd, an exclusive tour of the USS Slater in Albany. Now you can go online or do that in person. That's Saturday, April 22nd. Sunday, April 23rd, again, online and in person. Visit the Baby Asian Elephant Twins at Roseman Gifford Zoo in Syracuse, so one closer to us. And then on uh, April 29th, a private tour of Yankees Stadium in the Bronx. So that's kind of, I just thought that was nice. So if anybody you know uh, wants to participate in that, that's the place to contact. Speaking of that, we do have a little bit of housekeeping before we take our last break um, because we've been receiving so many great texts, so many great emails about charity events. Let's go to our text. There's a craft fair coming up April 15th at 10 a.m., Till 2 at the Horseheads American Legion Post 442. That's 71 Old Ithaca Road. That email there is if you'd like to register, if you'd like to uh, be a part of the event, maybe if you have crafts, um, something that you can sell, sell your wares. That's the information right there. And the next update, do you have all that? Or should I wait just one second? All right, this is the next one. Recruit New York weekend is coming up, and we're going to have a representative on with that. Assemblyman Phil Palmasano, uh, Palmasano was kind enough to uh, bring our attention to this. If you're thinking about joining a fire department or would like to get involved with the fire department by volunteering, this is the day where you can learn all about the job. You visit your local fire department, and you can find out more there at recruitny.org. On April 22nd, April 23rd, there's demonstrations, just easy ways to get involved. Always in need of uh, fire people, always in need of... Of volunteers okay now we're going to take our last break and then when we i'm sorry second to last break then when we come back plenty left to cover so stay with us this is frankly speaking on wydc tv big fox please stay with us welcome back to frankly speaking here on wydc tv big fox i'm your host Frank Akum, and this is the Hesselson studio on Marcus Street in Corning. If there's something you missed, maybe you want to uh, hear Sarah Latin's uh, full interview. If you missed some of it or if you just want to recap what she said and, and learn a little bit more, you can find it on YouTube. It'll be up uh, here in just a little bit as well as on our Facebook page. So please like us on Facebook on WYDC TV, Big Fox, and also uh, follow our YouTube page because you can catch up on any of the interviews that you may have missed or any of the programs. Every program is up there, and we'd love to, to get your opinion on it, and that's why you can contact me. Now, Miranda Devine has a, a very interesting piece with the New York Post today, and she highlights, and I found this weird. I don't think we've really had much of a chance to talk about it. I hinted at it when we were talking to former Congressman Tom Reed, but that is um, that tragic Nashville shooting, and this weird um, reaction by the media and by the uh, Biden administration. We know that every time Biden uh, went to speak on this, at first he made a joke. He talked about the ice cream that time, uh, about how he has a whole uh, fridge of this ice cream, and then, then he gets on to the somber part. And then uh, he joked that if Josh Hawley thinks it was an attack on Christians, and he doesn't. I mean, just very, very odd uh, reactions from this administration and that's the point that Miranda Devine has saying who's standing up for Christian kids and their families now they fear for their lives because of the hysterical lie encouraged by the president that their loving faith is bigoted and hateful toward transgender people and that's what uh, President Biden was suggesting in a tweet was it or a, pro a proclamation excuse me on March 31st, which is Transgender Day of Visibility. He said MAGA extremists who are advancing hundreds of hateful and extreme state laws that target transgender kids and their families, these attacks are un-American and must end. He marked the occasion with a 3,464-word fact sheet 
suggesting conservative politicians were driving transgender youth to commit suicide. So Miranda asked a question, who is standing up for the victims of last week's horror? Certainly not the media, which has decided that the real victims are the transgender community in the anticipation of some imaginary uh, backlash after what had happened. Fear uh, pervades Tennessee trans community amid focus on Nashville shooters gender identity was a typical headline from NBC. And what was the outlet? Was it CBS that uh, did not want it mentioned, uh, the transgender aspect man mentioned at all in the coverage of this? Uh, ignoring it, keeping uh, you from knowing uh, the actual news, covering it up, if you will. But that's, yeah, fear pervades Tennessee trans community amid focus on Nashville shooters gender identity. That was, and I, uh, this happens a lot with the left, this perceived imaginary backlash that they expect. So that piece is at the New York Post, if you want to find it for yourself, again, by Miranda Devine. One other thing from Fox, just before we go, Fox News put this out uh, about uh, the president's rating lower than an F, according to this. Biden's approval rating sunk from 45 to 38 percent, according to a March 23rd Associated Press NORC Center survey of more than a thousand adults. By comparison, his approval hit a record low at 36 percent in July after inflation hit a 40-year high. Still a lot of speculation and questioning if the president is going to run for re-election. I think we all assume he is. Uh, as Tom Reed mentioned, the dirty little secret is even the Democrats don't want him to run but can't say that. Um, but he hasn't made that official declaration yet that he's running uh, for re-election. I'd be shocked if he doesn't. Uh, but it's kind of interesting to think about who would be there to run if he doesn't. Probably maybe Hillary again. Um, Bernie Sanders. They've already talked about that a little bit. But who are some of the names, that, and you can contact me, who are some of the names that you think may run uh, if President Biden decides not to. They said there was speculation that Bernie was definitely considering it. I could see an Elizabeth Warren maybe running again. She's running for uh, re-election for Senate. That's six more years. So if you have an opinion on it, there's our contact information. It's hard to believe that the show is uh, is nearly over. We got a lot. We covered a lot today. I want to thank Sarah Latin for being our guest. She's the chair of the Chemung County uh, Republican Party. Get involved. Get active. Uh, you will feel good about it. If you are a politically a political person, and you most likely are because you're watching this program, you will find this extremely rewarding being a part of the committee. I'm a part of the Irwin Committee and the part of the Steuben County Committee. And it's petitions are about the only time where it's kind of difficult, but even that, as we said, can be fun if you make it fun. Um, it's unfortunate that they moved it to this time of year, but that's neither here nor there. We make do with what we have. So, yes, contact me if you want to get involved, if you missed where uh, to contact, or if you say, well, I'm not Shimon County. I'd like to be a Stuban or Tioga or whatever. Contact me. I'll, I'll get you in touch with uh, who you need to talk to so you can become more politically active. Well, I hope you have a great day, everyone. This has been Frankly Speaking at WYDC-TV Big Fox, broadcasting live from the Hesselson Studio on Marcus Street and Corning. I hope that you'll join us tomorrow. Make this a part of your daily routine by tuning into Frankly Speaking starting at 7 a.m. Have a great day, everyone.